Today on Upfront, voters go to the polls Tuesday in the first statewide race of 2018. They'll narrow the field for state Supreme Court from three to two. Next on Upfront, how partisans are viewing this officially nonpartisan race. Then Republican U.S. Senate candidate Kevin Nicholson on his campaign and why his parents donated to Democrat Tammy Baldwin. And a bill to allow developers to fill in some wetlands moves forward. The debate over helping developers and losing critical habitat. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. It's supposed to be nonpartisan, but increasingly our races for Wisconsin Supreme Court look and feel anything but that. This year, one candidate, Madison area attorney Tim Burns, is running openly as a progressive Democrat. Milwaukee County Circuit Court Judge Rebecca Dowlett is talking about progressive values and ran a TV ad criticizing President Trump. And Judge Michael Skrenok, who has received $142,000 in in-kind donations from the state Republican Party. The primary is Tuesday, when voters will narrow the field from three candidates to two. We're talking more about this race today with conservative commentator Jerry Bader and Democratic communications consultant Melissa Baldoff. Thanks to both of you for being with us Thanks today. Thanks for having us. Uh, Jerry Bader, I'm going to begin with you because there's always been the school of thought about Supreme Court elections as in a field of maybe three. One of them will be the, quote, conservative uh, candidate. Mm -hmm. Is that a guarantee on, on Tuesday night? It absolutely is not, in my opinion. And I have stopped making predictions on elections back in November of 2016. Uh, what I would Smart say... Smart move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what I would say is this. No, I don't think it's a guarantee that the Judge Scarnock advances, and I am going to express some personal pessimism here. And I, I've said this in just about every, be it the 10th Senate or the other races around the country. On any ballot, you can vote against Donald Trump. You can't vote for him. What I would watch carefully here is the enthusiasm gap we've heard so much about. Well, it's usually an 8 to 10 percent race. If it's 12 to 15, that's going to tell you something. Uh, I, I won't make a prediction as a conservative who wants a judicial conservative. I think this is going to be very tough. He has not run a perfect campaign, um, not a horrible campaign, as some have said. But I, I think uh, that you are looking at a situation where if he clears it, he's going to just clear it. Melissa, uh, let me, uh, you worked for the Democratic Party mm -hmm. at one time in, in Wisconsin as our communications person. Give me your sense of how this is being viewed uh, left of center in, in this race. How are people seeing this this contest? Tuesday? Sure. Well, for one, I would say I definitely agree with Jerry that it is not a foregone conclusion that the conservative is going to to come out in the primary on Tuesday. And what I would say is, uh, you know, there are some some untested strategies here at play. And I think Tim it's Burns, you're be, talking yes, about. Yes, absolutely. And I think it's going to be a matter of whether voters are looking for that kind of transparency about where people stand. Uh, I think, though that money talks, and money is certainly talking on behalf of uh, Mr. Skrenak, who has hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations coming in from the Republican Party, from dark money groups like the NRA, who he has said uh, he would vow to, to advance their interests. And I think it's going to be a matter of the voters choosing if, if they want that kind of transparency about uh, what someone stands for up front, or if they want to wait and see what happens on the court when the dark money is flowing. Jerry Bader, does this change the way these elections will look and sound for the future? It, it might, um, because, you're right. look, it has been a wink wink nod nod. We know, you know Judge Skrynak calls himself a judicial conservative, not a conservative judge. What that means is that he is, he is promising to use the Constitution as his guide and, and not the way that you want an issue to come out. Uh, Tim Burns is so unabashed in this. Here's how it might change. If he finishes number one big, well, who's not going to wear it on their sleeve in the future? Does the Democratic Party, uh, could this potentially change their behavior following the primary? Let's say Tim Burns gets in. Could Democrats begin to say, you know, we're going to be a bit more like our Republican cousins. We're, we're going to invest more heavily in this race. Sure. I think, again, this is, as I said, really an untested strategy, and it's going to be a matter of looking to see what the voters are responding to and, and what kind of transparency they're looking from candidates. Is, is it uh, within uh, Democratic per Party circles? Are people comfortable with the, with the Tim Burns um, 
campaign style this. I'm going to be very open. About, I'm even mm -hmm. going to put a D on a campaign ad. Tim Burns, Democrat, in one of my campaign ads. There's definitely mis mixed reactions from the folks that I've talked to, but I don't think anyone is saying, certainly no one I've heard from, is saying that it is a bad idea to uh, be vocal about who you are and be authentic and be honest and transparent about supporting Wisconsin values. We're talking about clean air and water. We're talking about protecting women's rights to make their own health care decisions. And these are core Wisconsin values that I think that people believe in. It's, uh, give me a sense of, uh, you've been on the radio for a long time, uh, up until recently, Jerry. Yes. Uh, um, and, and give me a sense of whether there is, you, you talked about enthusiasm. Are people enthused? Were they enthused in northeastern Wisconsin where you worked about this race? Or has this been just sort of a quiet under the radar race? Very much under the radar. I've had to try to bring them when I still have the opportunity, kicking and screaming to this. There's no excitement. There's no interest about this upstate. Based on, you know, having a radio show in Wausau, Sheboygan, and Green Bay, I, I, I've had Judge Scranach on. I've talked about it. I just don't see much of a pulse in this, and I don't think that bodes well for him. And give me your sense of, of enthusiasm right now, Melissa. I, mean, I guess we'll find out on Tuesday. Sure, but I would say I think there's been incredible enthusiasm uh, in Wisconsin. We saw in the uh, 10th Senate District, we saw a very decisive victory from State Senator Patty Schachner. Mm -hmm. I think we don't know what's going to happen, and we don't know which voters are going to turn out, but voters have been very inspired and empowered to turn out. And, you know, Donald Trump is not on the ballot but his extreme agenda is, and the divisiveness and the dysfunction that he has fostered in D.C. and around the country is absolutely up for discussion. And I think any time people can take a vote against it, they will. So, Jerry Bader, let's, let's, uh, we won't make predictions because we all know that's foolish. Um, but let's talk about if Judge Scrinock is one of the finalists, um, how will the, the party, how will conservatives approach that? Will they, will they have to do things somewhat differently than they've done them to date in this race? I think that's going to depend on a couple of things. It's going to depend upon who he's facing. Uh, they, you know, I think certainly from their perspective, they would love to see it be Tim Burns because he has been so unabashed that, look, you know, I, I'm going to legislate from the bench. That's just essentially what he's been saying. That's pretty low-hanging fruit for conservatives. Uh, and I, I think they see that as the much more defeatable target upstate, statewide. If it's Rebecca Dallet, she'll try to go back to being the moderate. She isn't. And, and then they'll navigate that. I'll give you the final word on it. Uh, um, if, if it. Does it become sort of the classic setup race if Screnock is one of the finalists? It's Republicans are going to do what they do, and then we'll see what the other side does. Well, I would say that Republicans are certainly doing what they do anyway. They are putting hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars behind an extreme candidate who is anti-woman, anti-worker, was the architect of Scott Walker's gerrymandering <laughs> scheme. So I think they're already displaying their true colors and showing that they want another rubber stamp on the court. All right, we're going to wrap things up there. Uh, we will see what happens on Tuesday night. A lot of questions still to be answered. Melissa Baldoff, Jerry Bader, Thanks very much for being with us. Our Facebook page today, we're asking if you plan to vote in the state Supreme Court primary on Tuesday. We hope so. And which candidate you'll support. You'll find that by liking and sharing up front on Facebook. And over on our website, I'm continuing the conversation with Jerry Bader, talking about his dismissal from his radio hosting job and his contention that his criticism of President Trump played a role in his firing. You'll find that on the upfront section of WISN.com. Coming up later on Upfront, a bill affecting Wisconsin wetlands, raising questions about developers' costs and environmental protection. But first, my interview with Republican U.S. Senate candidate Kevin Nicholson. We'll be talking about his campaign, and we'll also ask him why his parents are supporting Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin. That's next on Upfront. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company.